It also accepts messages to localhost.mydomain, so localhost.linuxcbt.internal, and also messages destined to user at localhost. If you want to handle a specific domain, then cut and paste the default, comment one of them out so that you have it in the event of any issues, and then append using a comma separator following the delimiter used, but commas and spaces are supported, and it tells you above, separated by commas and or white spaces, but to be consistent, we'll just use a comma, and indicate that we want to support the domain linuxcbt.internal. Another way to do this is to assign my origin to linuxcbt.internal and then set my destination equal to my origin using a dollar sign. That works as well. So we will now handle linuxcbt.internal and we'll now listen to all interfaces. Now of course if you're sending messages from the remote system you need to ensure that the MX record points to the IP address of this postfix server so that sending SMTP servers can find this destination server. And again, there are many other directives in here. We won't go over all these for a deeper look at the, the Postfix environment. Look at Linux CBT Postfix Edition. Or if you want to study send mail, Postfix QMail, look at mail edition altogether. But we're just going to set some of the basic variables to get mail routing. Now, once we've made the change, we should restart, or the change is, we should restart the server using, of course, service postfix restart. And if there are any errors, then, of course, the service will not restart properly, and a non-zero exit status will be returned. Let's echo the exit status. It's clean. Let's netstat ntlp grep 25. And now we see postfix listening via the master process to all IP addresses, which means we'll be able to connect to the server from remote systems. doesn't mean remote systems will be able to relay through this server, but it does mean that this server will at least accept their connection and be given the opportunity to determine whether or not it should accept messages from connecting clients. Now there's another utility. Let's just go ahead confirm directives using postconf, and that's this other utility that we alluded to briefly when we were looking at the contents of the Postfix RPM package. Postconf dumps all of the currently set variables as Postfix sees them. TLS, the ciphers, virtual maps, transport maps, SMTPD, so on and so forth. If you've changed some of the variables, then use Postconf and then grep the name of the variable you're interested in, such as my destinations. This will reveal the my destination that's set. And we should see momentarily there it is my destination equal equals hostname, localhost, localhost, Linux CBT dot internal. So this tells us exactly the domain types, the formulations that the server will accept mail for. And we've also changed inet interface, so let's look for inet underscore int, and we'll see inet underscore interfaces equals all. So the postconf utility is helpful in dumping information regarding set variables, but it also can be used to set variables from the command line. So if you wanted to change something dynamically without updating the config file, you could use postconf as well to change or make the changes dynamically to the running server. So use PostCon for that particular reason. Now with all of that said, we need to attempt to send a message to, let's say, the user root at linuxcbt.internal. But in order for this to work, when a lookup is performed, let's say from the remote system, which is to us locally, because this is where we're connected to currently, but from the perspective of mail, it's remote. So, so let's say for, from serve one, we want to send a message to serve four. From serve one's perspective, first and foremost, take a look at the resolve.conf to see which server will be consulted first. And we did comment in our recent studies to speed up name resolution when we were looking at Apache. We commented out the Windows server, which took a while to respond, possibly because it was off at the time that we were doing Apache studies. So, so long as the server, the primary or the available DNS, any of the available DNS servers will return or resolve lookups for 
MX is for the Linux CBT internal domain, then the SMTP instance on this system will be able to communicate with the SMTP instance on the remote system. So let's dig Linux CBT internal MX to see the perspective from the Linux CBT serve one box. And as you can see, it knows the MX because we wrote it to be Linux CBT serve four, which ultimately gets translated to 192.168.75.199. And you can always look up the item distinctly using dig. And this tells us that indeed in the answer section it's 199. This means when we send messages it will connect to 199. So on the remote system, let's launch MUT, remote meaning the system we're currently logged in at, delete these superfluous messages using upper D, quit, clear it out, relaunch, new message, root at linuxcbt serve 4 dot linuxcbt dot internal. This is one way to test if it'll send it based on its FQDN and we'll say testing using FQDN not using the MX record. This is a test of mail delivery using the FQDN not the MX record. This is just to see whether or not a message can be transmitted from the local system to the remote system using its host name. So we'll escape shift colon WQ and then wide ascend. So now locally our system will attempt to send a message and we can confirm whether or not it has by executing mail queue. If you see that the message is stuck in the queue that means it has a problem resolving Linux CBT serve 4 dot Linux CBT dot internal. As you can see here, the sender is on the serve one box trying to reach a similarly named recipient on the remote system. Now the queue is empty, so guess what? It took a little bit to resolve, but it ultimately resolved because the queue is now empty and you can confirm by tailing var log where the mail log is stored, mail log. And there we will see that the message was sent to the remote, sy remote system. It said host not found Linux CBT serve 4, host not found to root at Linux CBT serve 1. So this could have yielded a bounce. Let's take a look and there's the bounce. It was unable to find Linux CBT serve 4, host unknown. So this yielded a bounce. That means from the shell, if we attempted to ping Linux CBT serve 4, Linux CBT dot internal, an error should be returned. Here it actually returns 192.168.75.199. Now that tells us a few things, or it tells us one thing in particular. If we net that NTLP grep 25, we'll see that the local, what appears to be in this case send mail, is bound to the loopback adapter. And because it's bound to the loopback adapter, it cannot initiate a routed outbound session. So it's not that it doesn't know who the host is, it does. It just cannot perform a connection outbound because it's bound to the loopback adapter. Again, a dig Linux CBT serve 4 dot Linux CBT dot internal performs the same query performed by any MTA, send mail, QMail, or postfix. So the errors are misleading. We should just note that. So E attempt to send message from Linux CBT serve 1 to Linux CBT serve 4 and it fails. If it fails, configure MTA on Linux CBT serve 1 to listen to routable IP address. Now it's running SendMail. SendMail supports of course changing the interface that it listens to. In fact, SendMail's cons configuration that is, is located in ETC mail and its primary config file sendmail.cf is created from sendmail.mc. This file contains macros which get expanded using the M4 macro program to appropriate sendmail lingo. And in here you will find where sendmail actually binds to the loopback adapter and you can either comment that line out or change it to the address. Here daemon options is set to address 127.0.0.1. You can either set this to all zeros or comment this line out altogether and restart sendmail. So nano sendmail mc 
we'll find 127, 0, 0, 1. And for this line, again, you can comment it out. And it tells you here, it only listens to the loopback address. Remove it if you wanted to accept messages from the intranet or the internet. Or you could set it to all zeros. That's an option. That means to listen to all IP addresses. Or you can comment it out altogether as follows. Either or will cause SendMail to listen to all IPs. Now, one of the neat things of using or features of using SendMail within Red Hat Enterprise or Red Hat altogether, even as far back as version 9, is that when you restart the SendMail server or service, it re